Well, here we are. We are getting ready to start out a little veggie, huh, Nathan? Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you your thought of the day right now. We're gonna get it out of the way right at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna say the same thing I said last time. I want you to have a thought of it. Oh, day. okay. All right. That's you too. You never have a good one. That's too original. So, well, Nate's doing a service on this 7200. And the last time we seen this 7200 is when we put an exhaust manifold, uh, gaskets, and studs into it. And we had a stud that we broke off. Ah, uh, right here. And what we did is we welded a stud in there. Just regular cap screws that hold it. And so far, so good as far as that not leaking. We also developed a leak back here on this V-band clamp. So far, that's staying true. Uh, this is just in for an oil change. And I thought I would just kind of glance at that quickly. So this is getting a service. Mixer wagon's getting grease and whatnot. We're going to start working on this little forklift. When we were working on... We started doing the work on that 9620. We ended up blowing a tire on this right rear corner. Here is this guy right over here. It's, uh, I don't know if an object went in it or if it's just wore enough, but um, probably an object went into it. The tire's not shot enough, but uh, we're going to put a new one on it. If you recall, for quite some time, We've had a bearing gone on the steer axle. We're gonna go ahead and fix that today and we are going to put new seals into the lift cylinders and give this kind of a, this a little bit of a service. So I've got some parts that I ordered. I actually ordered some parts for the other one as well, but we're going to get started on getting this bearing replaced on this steer axle so we'll get this tore apart it is the bearing is clear out of the bottom of it um jason took this cap off here the other day and i ordered a new bearing for it uh bearings and um somewhere here there's a a shaft in here as well but Subsequently enough, we also have lift cylinder seals that are leaking on the other one. So we're going to get this one completely going. And then we're going to uh, go after the other one. We want to try to maintain or we want to be able to have at least one forklift running out of the two. So we don't want to demobilize both of them. So we'll go ahead and get this tore on out. Good thing this one has a fuel leak.
right, so we've got this steering knuckle removed. Um, we tried heating it up. We tried driving that pin out. It just was not having it. We've got the steering knuckle sitting on now. Actually, it's the wheel hub assembly, steering wheel hub assembly sitting over there. This is the pin that we had to remove. We just snipped the top of it, snipped the bottom, pulled the whole hub out. We've got new parts here. That hub assembly, spindle assembly here is no longer available. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't drive that pin out. We should have a little better success doing it on the bench opposed to having it in the unit because we can hit it harder here on the bench. So I could not whack that out with a hammer. I used the hydraulic press. I only had about seven ton of force on it. I thought once I got it out of part of the way, I'd be able to get it out the rest of the way with pounding it with a hammer, but that did not do the trick. So we're gonna have to clean this guy up a little bit to get this pin to fit. There was gonna be no way that we were gonna be able to drive that pin out with it in the unit. I scored it up a little bit right here with a torch. We'll have to fill that in with a weld, grind it down. I would have, it would have been nice to have replaced this, but um, like I was saying, there was not one available. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this up, get it so the pin will go in there and then we'll start reassembling this. All right, we are fixing to get this thing back together. We've got a couple of races that I can't get out. I'm gonna weld a bead of weld around on the inside of them. Let them cool. When they cool, they're going to constrict. And uh, that's gonna allow us to pound them out.
All right, so it took quite a little bit to get these races out of here. Here's part of that pin and bearing that we cut apart from the top. Um, here is the lower race that was in there. We welded around it, and then when that um, cooled down, it shrunk it. The top one was a little bit of a bear to get out. So we're gonna try to get this back together with everything kind of wore out. The spindle was not available to buy, and it is war. It's war right there a little bit. We're just gonna get it back together and just keep pumping the grease to it. Hopefully we can get it to survive a couple of years. There is a used axle on eBay, the whole complete axle for like 2,500 bucks. I don't really want to pay that, but um, we might be forced to. So we'll go ahead and stuff this in there. We've got a new pin. We'll have to push this up through from the bottom. Get that lined up, get all of our bearings and seals and cups in there. And then get our wheel back on. And hopefully it gives us several trouble-free years here. So, let's go ahead and start reassembling.
right, so we've got our little kingpin jobber in there along with the bearings. Um, we've got to hook our tie rods up. Then we'll put our actual hub on there. We'll repack those bearings, get them on there. It would have been nice to have replaced this steering hub. However, they do not have them available anymore. Um, just because this machine is so old. I ended up finding a whole axle on eBay last night. I wish I had found this uh wish i had found that axle before i started this job um i would have bought the whole damn thing the uh or i would have put it in before i would have done this i wouldn't have ordered any parts we had to which i've got a bolt to tighten up back there we had to put a lot of money into the steering cylinder on this and the steering cylinder is not available anymore and it'll be a good idea to have a spare axle sitting around. I don't know if it'll work on the other forklift. That axle looks like it's quite a bit different than this one. But I figured that we're probably on borrowed time with this whole axle assembly. So we're going to uh, have a spare one anyhow. We'll probably never use it, but it'll never one won't be available again uh on ebay like that with as old as this machine is this machine is a 83 so yeah tire sits a lot more straighter before that was cocked just like that from that bearing being out on the bottom of that uh, steer cylinder so we're going to turn the wheel I'm going to see if I can get that castle nut to tighten up if it can't I'll just have to put a smaller cotter pin in there but I knew, do need to grease the tie rods on this right hand side that one tie rod I didn't want to grease it because I didn't want it to slip at all so we'll get the wheels turned see if we can't tighten that up and then get it greased we'll turn it around and then i'm going to rebuild the lift cylinders on it you can see it lifts a little bit of oil on the floor right there jacob yeah right. leaking right. we're gonna make it more gooder okay so we have um we weren't able to get that uh tie rod get a cotter pin in it we've got grease in there we're just gonna turn this around so that we can rebuild those cylinders up on that lift portion of the the front of the unit we'll get this pulled out of the way clean that mess up and then just back it right back in right where it's sitting we might need the other forklift to come and grab some, some stuff off the front of it so we'll just back it up and get it repositioned <sighs>
right, so we've got this forklift now turned around. And what we're going to do now is we are going to fix these hydraulic cylinders. One or both of them. Actually, both of them are leaking. So we got a new packing kit to put into both of those. And then that will seal up that unit. And it will keep this machine from leaking hydraulic oil all over the floor. That's one reason why. We bought this second machine and then this second machine came in very handy because we ended up blowing a tire on this one right in the middle of doing the wheels and whatever on that 9620. So when I bought this one here, this one had a small leak on the lift cylinders as well and I figured that it's just a common thing with them and um, we're going to get that one fixed. However, I did not want to break into fixing that one until we had a good time to work on it and not have use or uh, run out of having use of the machine. Being that we've got a second one here, we actually have a third one as well, but we don't use that 8,000 pound machine. That one needs to be just sold or and or sent to the scrap pile this one here is a 1983 that one there is a 91 and the old yellow one that we have is a 63 um, these green ones are real nice machines they're they're small enough yet they're big enough to get jobs done around the shop we can drive this one right through that narrow opening right there being that we got junk in the way we can get around things we can get, you know, if this was over a little tighter. We've had things in here parked in this bay, and we've been able to sneak around behind it, whereas the little yellow one, or the big yellow one, we wouldn't be able to do that. So we're going to try to take the easiest approach to get these cylinders out. I don't know what it's going to entail, but we're going to do our best to get these apart with minimal... Uh, tear down here um, it's looking like I can just take a bolt out of the top uh, take the, the hold down bolt off the bottom and then just slide it to the side and pull it out I'm not sure if that's gonna work that easy but we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna get after it here All right, so I ended up moving this forklift over to this side of the shop just so I could pull the gantry out. And what I've done is I have removed the bolts here from the top of this mast. And I've lifted this up a little bit so that we can just send this chain around it, hook it to the gantry. And we can raise this mast up off the cylinders. I had a friend of mine that is retired from a company here locally that used to work on these. And I gave him a call this morning. And I said, hey, it uh, looks like this is a rather easy job. Do I have to do much to get these cylinders out? He said, no, you should be able to just... Put a block of wood under the mast, take your bolts out. Should be able to get the cylinders right out of there. So, that's what we're doing. We've got the bolts out from the top. And then, down in the bottom here, it just sets onto a little tiny saddle. It looks like there's supposed to be a bolt that goes down over the top of that saddle. However, there is not. So, we're going to raise this up a little farther. Then we should be able to pull these cylinders right out the back. Um, there's a hydraulic hose hooked to the bottom. We're going to have to release that first because it's not going to let us get it out of there. We do have the machine running still. Um, but we'll shut it off. So we'll crack those JIC fittings loose. And then we'll bring that cylinder out with the hose hooked to it. 
probably gonna have a mess of oil on the floor here. I have to get a splash bucket and uh, let that drain down into the bucket. All right, we've got our hydraulic lines on hook. We just need to go up a little higher with this mast here. I guess that's about high enough. But we should be able to lift them cylinders out of there. We've got our fabrication specialist working on this sand truck. We've got a crack in the frame on each side. We've got Susquatch here and Sarge working on it. One of your fans on YouTube nicknamed you Susquatch. I don't know why. Do you have any words of advice for that particular fan? No. I, I think you should give him some... Some piece of some, advice? Some words of recognition that you recognize that he's a moron, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for giving the effort to give me a <laughs> There you go. Maybe he'd want to meet you in person. Yeah, just let your sesquat uh, attitude go on him, maybe. Just to show him who's boss. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Well, we've got a crack uh, developing in the frame on each side. I think it was a year ago now that we did the whole rear end. But we've got little tiny stress cracks starting to develop on the front. They're going to put... Four by eight angle iron on each side and then they're gonna plate it with some half inch plate on the other side just to beef it all up. Um, we caught this one way ahead of time here when we redid the back end. That crack, cause it had this whole engine hanging from the rear and uh, that whole piece broke off. So they'll get that on there. We'll show you what it looks like, but we're gonna get these cylinders lifted out of here or attempt to anyways. to get that cylinder out of there um, probably not exactly the way you're supposed to do it but this is the way we did it the boys have got their angle iron piece cut and ready to weld on to the under frame of this mench sand truck they got a four by eight angle cut and coped out to match the uh, different gussets that are on there and then they're going to put a half inch plate on the other side So they'll have a strong reinforcement of half inch material on there right there Sasquatch right. <laughs> Oh boy You all set to do some major welding. Where's your chair? You should have a chair for underneath that shouldn't you? I'll be all right. You'll be all right So the last time we rebuilt a cylinder the one to the payload, everybody said, oh, I should hold it with the hydraulic press. Well, that cylinder might have been too big to hold with the hydraulic press in order to get the gland nut off of it. This is a smaller diameter cylinder. Shouldn't take as much torque. Yes, this is a 50-ton press, but it doesn't have a lot of girth to it on the ground to absorb all that extra torque. Some of you watch Curtis, and uh, you see that's the way he does it but his press is a lot bigger. So we'll get a catch pail underneath this guy. We'll get our gland nut off. We'll just pull the rod right out. Uh, do the packings that we need up in this gland nut. And then there's O-rings on the bottom of this piston or this cylinder rod on the actual piston itself. That will refresh. We'll get that one back in there. And then we'll pull out the other one. When I originally looked at this, I had seen that there was a saddle 
it's just got a like a peg style piece on the cylinder uh, the hold down is on the far side underneath the yoke on that uh, curl back cylinder so we've only got one on hook one at a time we'll use one to hold this from falling forward we've got our hold down obviously off of this side once we get this cylinder done we'll get it in there and then unhook uh, the other side so we'll go ahead and see if we can't pound this guy here apart and uh, we'll get a catch tail underneath it collect all our oil and get to rebuilding this All right, so we got the cylinder rod pulled out of there. Got it sitting on the bench. Really simple job to do this. I could probably, and I probably, I could have probably left the, um, I probably could have left the damn uh, cylinder in the unit and then just pulled this out the top but um, we did it this way. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this guy apart, put our new packings on there and then just slide it all back together. The chrome is all real good on the rod. You don't have any pitting or anything like that. So this should be an easy uh, repair. All right, so there isn't much at all to the actual piston itself just got these halves that go on there and all there was is this guy around it to keep it together this new kit has these that go on there and what they're going to do is just come on to each side of the split like that to kind of hold it together so we'll get them on there and then we'll have to pull all the packings out of the cap itself that's where our problem is going to lie is up in that guy and then we'll just slide this barrel back in there and put it back in the actual machine itself
So we've got this guy all back together. And we'll get a little bit of grease. Wheel bearing grease will work. She's a working. Uh, yeah, I'll be ready to set this right back in there in a hot minute. Yeah. I will. Good. Lift that way up and then plunk it down in there. Yeah. yeah. Mucho good. Hey, at least the black trickle smells better inside. It smells better. Smells better too. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of pizza in there. A lot of pizza? A lot of pizza. Damn. Yeah. What do you think there, Jacob <laughs> Nuts? Huh? I don't know. Watch it, you're standing right in the way. You make a better door than you do a window. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> you need to report again. We gotta document all this. If I don't show it getting done, they won't think it got done. All right. Hey, the camera. It makes a good view for him. All right, now we're going to just set this right back on in there. Yeah. <laughs> Was the bolt go down through on top? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll just take this over there. We got to set it in from the top and then drop it down. That's all we got to do. It's not that bad. Not that bad at all. <laughs> so, we used the hydraulic press to keep it from turning. But these gland nuts weren't all that tight anyways. This little Mickey Mouse cylinder. You know, they ain't like them payloader cylinders where they're like... Huge and they're That hot. big, you know? So... Is that part of the problem or how bad was this? Well, this one was loose inside. But I didn't really see a packing issue. But all of it is right up in here. I mean, if I have to do this again, I'm just going to take the top off. Yeah, go that way. So, all right. <laughs> all right, so we've got our packings all back in there. We've got this ready to go back together. So we'll just release the uh, pressure off of this press. Now we just used that so we wouldn't it wouldn't turn on us at all, but I probably could have done this in the vise. But we wanted to make everybody happy and show them that, you know, we could use this same or do the same method that everybody has seen on the old YouTubes here. So we'll take this over and let it back down into the mast on this forklift.
sure that strap doesn't need a hiding. Yeah, get it. All right, so that that strap is winched, cinched in there. it up some so power the lift probably gonna take a little while we got to load that with Earl go back with it just hold it back it'll it'll load you got my look at that look at that all right <laughs> we can take that chain off oh you shouldn't be standing on there that cylinders that I just fixed could fail you could fall two feet onto the ground and break your knee not OSHA approved. it's not OSHA approved I had some clown the other day he worried about me cutting holes in the forks Why? Yeah, he just he was worried he said you better not let OSHA see that I said it's not a, a an approved lifting device for you know for <laughs> Lifting overhead of people working underneath it. But oh well. Well, why don't we get this gantry out of the way? Pull that over there. Why don't you cycle that all the way to the top, Jay? Long as them cylinders stay clean, that'll mean that she. It's all the way up. All the way. All right. Back down? Yeah, you can go back down. We'll pick up the tools. We'll pull this one out of the way. We'll clean up the floor. We'll get the other one backed right up on in here. We're going to do the same thing to the other one. Then what we'll do <coughs> is we'll leave this all the way up overnight with a nice, clean, dry spot underneath it. See if it mucho leaks, right? All right. So that should conclude this job. Uh, we really don't know if the cylinders are uh, not leaking or not because we need to let it sit overnight. What it was doing is just ever so gently oozing out oil from the top. And then when it would do that, um, it would leave a big puddle on the floor it would ooze up out of the rods i really didn't see anything wrong with the packings other than that cylinder on the left side was real real loose um here's that inner packing but it's it's hard to say i mean years and years of cycling could do it so that is gonna do it for this video. In like typical fashion around here, as soon as we're ready or done, as soon as we think we're done with working on this forklift, we'll wash it. Because we'll want it clean to operate. We don't need it clean to work on. We just need it clean to operate, right? 
we do need to change the oil on this i got an oil filter for this one and one for that one and uh yeah so the boys also have the frame job done on this mench sarge is just throwing some primer on it they did a very nice job we put some four by eight by half angle iron on this outside then they snuck in down in below and they put a piece of half inch plate on the inside and it worked very nicely because we're three by ten box tube running as a frame rail and that uh, four by eight half inch angle iron left us a half inch lip that that leg laid down in on the bottom side of that uh, rectangular tube and then they were able to set their six inch flat bar on the inside they stitch welded it put another cross member in there and this should last for another long while put it all the way up looks like we got a clean dry spot on the floor get him to go all the way up and we'll leave it overnight we probably should put it next to the door jay in the heavy traffic area where we're walking underneath it I was gonna say, that's not you know <laughs> should we put up many cones around the outside of it so no one walks under it oh, yeah. so we're gonna leave it overnight it's all the way up <laughs> everything is nice and dry one thing about this mast is it's well oiled you know there's them rollers i mean they've had nice fresh oil to work with all the while mm -hmm. they're in good shape that's a plus yeah i've had this thing for 20 years and that yeah, it's, been quite a long it's, time. it's been more than 20 years because uh you did the motor the spring that i bought it i remember on my wife's birthday which is the 11th of april to may Imagine that I remember that date still. We were working on a corn planter right here, and this building wasn't here. And this building was put up in 04, so I've had this thing for more than 20 years. And she's still kicking. And, yeah. Hopefully we can get 20 years out of that one. I can retire on that one. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have the same thing to do to this one and uh this one i think is going to be a little more mucho harder maybe not not might be boy it doesn't act like it's going to come up out of the top there too easy so maybe this one well no i don't think this one's going to be a little harder to do but um, I'm sure we'll have the camera rolling here tomorrow when we do it. So that's going to do it. Take it easy, folks. We will catch you at the next one. Everything is nice and solid on the rear end and oil-free on the front end.